Hi guys, welcome to Hormones and the Regulation of Blood Glucose Concentration video part 1. So in this video we will be looking at the action of the adrenaline, we will be looking at the second messenger model and we also will recap the role of the liver in the, uh, in the uh, blood glucose concentration. So before we start, we've got uh, two questions here to just recap on the general knowledge of the glucose. So a glucose biosensor is an instrument used to measure blood, uh, blood glucose concentration and it contains an enzyme called glucose oxidase. And a glucose biosensor detects only glucose and use your knowledge of the way in which enzymes work to explain why. And another question is um, about the Benedict test, that it's used to uh, measure the concentration of glucose in a sample of blood. And so just two reasons why. So for the first question, you need to say, why is it only glucose uh, combined with the word enzymes? So your knowledge about the enzymes of being specific, having specific shape of the active site, so producing the enzyme subject complexes is needed here. So enzymes have the active site that is specific, has a tertiary structure, and only glucose has correct shape. So it's complementary and that will bind with the active site to produce enzyme subject complexes. Then of the Benedict's test, you should remember the benedicts uh, detects all reducing sugars, glucose is the reducing sugar. And in terms of the uh, concentration, we can use it because it's quantitative test. So it, do, uh, it, it only provides a color. But uh, in terms of the color, the higher the concentration, the, we will get the red color. Lower concentrations, you could be looking at orange, yellow, green colors. So um, in terms of the hormones, what we need to remember, they act antagonistically, they uh, act on the way of the negative feedback and the blood glucose concentration determines the quantity of insulin and glucagon hormones being produced. And what we need to remember, the blood glucose concentrations is not constant, okay, it fluctuates and the um, uh, optimum, the norm uh, blood glucose concentrations is in the, in the blood. So the hormones, how do they actually work? So they are produced in the glands. Okay, so once they are secreted by glands, they will be directly secreted into the blood and they will be carried into blood plasma to the target cells. Okay, so you can see target cells here. The cells, uh, the target cells uh, are the cells that the hormone is going to act on. So target cells contains the specific receptors on the surface uh, membrane and they are complementary to those specific hormones. So hormones will be then uh, effective in low concentrations they are widespread and long lasting. So we will be looking in this video in the second messenger model. So this is one of the uh, examples of the mechanisms of common action. And in here we will be using two hormones, adrenaline and glucagon. What we need to remember is the fact that in the second messenger model of hormone action, the hormone has its effect inside a cell even though it never even enters the cell. And in terms of the adrenaline hormone, it's produced by adrenal glands and they are located above the kidney and uh, it, it will be produced at the times of excitement or stress. So the job of the adrenaline is to increase the blood glucose concentration and this is done, as we've said, the hormones will bind to the protein receptors on the cell surface of the target cells. And the main uh, action of the second mo uh, messenger model is to activate enzymes that will cause the process called glycogenolysis, which is the breakdown of glycogen into glucose, which takes place in the liver. So how does it work? Okay, we've got the adrenaline, which is the first messenger here. 
uh, we've got the receptor uh, sites on the liver cells because we are uh, the target cell is a liver cell. We've got a protein, and at the bottom here we've got attached adenylate cyclase, which is inactive. But once the adrenaline binds and makes the uh, adrenaline receptor complex, the adenylate cyclase becomes activated due to the change in shape so you can clearly see the difference here okay there was a change in shape so this active uh, adrenaline receptor complex now it's going to catalyze the reaction so atp will be broken down hydrolyzed to cyclic amp which then further activates the another protein called protein kinase enzyme so it changes its shape okay it becomes activated and this enzyme can catalyze the glycogenolysis so the breaking down hydrolysis of glycogen to glucose so if you are ready now you can pause this video and you can make notes on uh, what i was just talking about and remember this glucose will now move out of the liver cell by facilitated diffusion into the blood okay through the channel proteins and increase the level of the blood glucose concentration so you can pause the video now and make the notes and a few questions to check so we've got the past paper question adrenaline binds to receptors in the plasma membranes of liver cells and explain how this causes the blood glucose concentration to increase so from our model you need to select keywords so adenylate cyclase it's activated cyclic amp is produced which acts as a second messenger which activates the enzymes uh, in the cell to undergo uh, pro uh, to uh, catalyze the process of glycogenolysis which breaks down glycogen to glucose and that in uh, will be then uh, uh, that will then diffuse uh, through the facilitated diffusion through the channel proteins into the blood hence increase the concentration so we will finish this video by looking at the role of the liver in the regulation of the blood sugar concentration. So liver is located uh, below the diaphragm. It's around 1.5 kilograms uh, and uh, it's made of the cells which are called hypocytes. So uh, the insulin and glucagon are another uh, hormones which have the effect here on the liver. So there are three uh, uh, processes that you need to know. Glycogenesis. So this is the process that converts glucose into glycogen. And this, uh, this, uh, this takes place when the blood glucose concentration is higher than normal. So what happens once you convert glucose to glycogen, which is a storage uh, molecule, which is a polymer, that way you will uh, lower the concentration of blood glucose. We also got glycogenolysis, which we'll look at in terms of the second messenger model. That is then used when the blood glucose concentration is lower than normal because it breaks down glycogen into the glucose, which will then diffuse into the blood. And finally, we've got gluconeogenesis. Gluco gluconeogenesis, I can't even pronounce this properly. So this is the process which will produce the glucose from other sources than carbohydrates. So you could use uh, like glycerol or amino acids. And this is in the po uh, position when the glycogen is all used up. And another uh, organ that we need to look at is pancreas. So the pancreas has a specific uh, cells, isolated cells of like enhanced and they secrete actually our hormones glucagon and insulin so as you can see we've got the beta cells and alpha cells here alpha cells uh, they will secrete glucagon directly into blood plasma same as we did before which will bind to the receptor proteins on the target cells of the liver okay so target cell here in terms of those hormones are it is liver and then we've got beta cells so beta cells will detect uh, the increase in the blood glucose concentration and they will uh, produce uh, they will respond to the stimulus to this increase 
by secreting hormone called insulin again directly into the blood which will then bind to the receptor proteins on the liver 